Hello and welcome to the original, the only podcast of its kind for the Quantum Grammar Shoot, a podcast that talks about the grammar technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar, i.e. Quantum Grammar, and how it relates to everyday life and current events. And I am your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. This is a podcast of opinion where I share my thoughts on a psychological level of how one would use this technology navigating through everyday now space and other related subjects. Hope you enjoy. When people used to ask me, hey, What's the use of learning quantum grammar? Why should I learn quantum grammar? I kind of took it as they want me to sell them on something. They want me to convince them of something. And if anybody approached me in that manner, then I would just come to the conclusion that they're not ready for it. If they need to be convinced about it, then they're not ready to learn it. They're not in that continuum space to learn it not prepared don't have the neurological pathways to get down the road to the facts now at this now space juncture I'm thinking about it a little bit differently and I'm going to give you an analogy I think a pretty darn good analogy it's one that I use a lot yeah, with regards to other subjects, and I'll use it here. I use the combat arts analogy, meaning if you train in a combat art and you become proficient at it in training, and you never have to use it ever out in the street until one day, one day, you are in a situation where you have to protect yourself or you have to protect your loved ones. And you are able to do so. You are capable of doing so because you learned how to fight. You learned a martial art and you were able to take care of that situation because you had that training. You had that knowledge at your disposal. You had that tool sharpened and ready to go on your tool belt. You know, same thing with whatever other type of uh, protection you may have. And it's the same thing with quantum grammar. You may not have an immediate need for it, but I'd have to say that it's a pretty good guess that 9.9% of everyone listening to this has had, does have, or will have a need for a tool like correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar to stop some sort of trespass upon them by the fiction system. And it's instead of being in that situation and flailing around looking for help, sending emails out to people whose videos you saw on YouTube saying, please help me, I have this case, please help me, I'm I'm going to court tomorrow. You know, instead of being in that situation, if you would actually have invested the time and the value and the sweat equity in learning something like quantum grammar, you would have that at your disposal. You wouldn't have to be flailing around. You would be prepared. Invariably, I get approached by people who have been down the common law road. Those who have used it and have been successful with it to some extent, but still can't quite get the end conclusion, the desired end conclusion that they want. That the fiction system will not leave them alone for one reason or another. I don't, again, Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. 
common law works great for some people. Some people are able to keep up with it and are able to stay on top of the constant changes and modifications and codes or whatever that the fiction does. And they're able to research all that stuff and keep up with it. And they're doing great. And I'm a big fan of whatever works. If it works, why, fi why change it? There's nothing there to fix, right? But for myself personally, with first-hand knowledge, I'm sharing with you that I have been and am being approached by those who have done years of common law and now are looking for something more potent to use because they realize that common law is basically just using fiction against fiction. It's in the fiction arena, it's still in their jurisdiction, you're still in the mud with the pigs. And we know that analogy. When you go in the mud with the pigs, it's up to you how long you want to wrestle with them and how rough you want to get. But the end result is always you leaving with mud and shit all over you. And you might be beat up and bruised too. Smelling like crap. And the pig is still the pig and is happy. Doesn't care because the pig loves to roll around and wrestle in the mud. Doesn't care. That's the fiction. When one makes the choice to invest the time, to invest the value, to invest their sweat equity and their energy in obtaining closure on the grammar that they use, this is a tool that will be on their belt, much like riding a bike, that will always be there. And they can pull it out whenever they need to, just like martial arts, just like, you know, any kind of weapon, if you've had gun training or whatever else you've used for defense, I don't know. Uh, it's there. You know how to use it and you're confident. And a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety is off of your mind, off of your shoulders, off of your spirit. Once you have that confidence, when you get the closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, script. Now, myself, I didn't get that type of confidence and closure until many thousands of hours after I had experimented with it, used it, performed with it, and been successful with it. And that's, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It takes a long time. But what better time to start than now if you want that type of tool on your tool belt? As Colin David Ivelin Colin Miller was fond of saying, it's like swatting a fly with a wrecking ball. And I kind of won, you know, I, I took that a step further and said, no, it's actually kind of like swatting a fly with a nuclear bomb. When you use it, it's just, it's so potent. There's no other way to describe it. And the only way for you to really know that is to learn it and use it yourself. And there are steps, but the first step is to get that foundation of grammar built, locked in solid. Unfortunately, I've also had people who've contacted me wanting to learn the grammar who have been learning the grammar or, or actually been involved with uh, groups that claim to have closure on the grammar and claim to have some sort of knowledge about it. I've been approached by people, individuals who have been involved in these types of groups, you know, the, the various colored thumb groups or whatever you want to call them, or communities, for years. Two years, three years, five years, ten years. And they still don't have closure on the grammar. I had one fellow contact me two years ago who was involved with one of those thumb clubs. And he was asking me grammar questions. He never did a workshop, but we did have a consultation. And I gave him some closure on uh, the colon mechanics, how that works forwards and backwards the uh, quantum grammar quote-unquote shorthand uh, thing that uh, I came up with 
and I directed him toward the video that I have that gives closure on that. Two years later, he recently contacted me again asking the same question about the colons. Now, my question was, if, if this guy is involved with these thumb clubs and these so-called authorities or commanders or chiefs on this grammar, then a simple thing like that, within two years, why wouldn't he have closure on something like that? It doesn't make sense. But then again, it does make sense when you look at what's going on in those uh, venues. And as I've shared with the listeners in the past, if you're familiar with my podcast and my videos, it's uh, my opinion, it's my conclusion that those clubs and those authorities and those individuals have gone completely into the fiction. They're using quasi-quantum grammar that to the untrained eye seems like it's something seems like it's something special but it's not correct and it definitely does not hold or maintain the mathematical interface on the grammar forwards and backwards the sentences do not hold the same value forwards as they do backwards and the way you can certify that is to simply challenge one of those sentence authors to read their own sentence backwards and see what happens <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it is a very potent tool to have in your tool belt. Again, it's just one tool out of many that you can use. But I must reiterate that it's better to learn something like that, like quantum grammar, or like a martial art, or like uh, gun safety, you know. Uh, things like that, protective uh, measures, it's good to learn those things before a situation presents itself to you. Because you may walk around thinking that you'll be able to take care of yourself and then you're in that situation and suddenly you feel like the emperor with no clothes. You can't explain what you're doing. And that's another thing, That's uh, I'll go into that in the next segment about uh, those individuals from those thumb clubs that have contacted me. That's what they find happens to them. What they find happens is they will be in a situation with a Vasily or, or in a foreign vessel in dry dock or wherever, whatever. And because whoever they were following, whoever they were believing at the time, whether it's the individual across the pond in England or whether it's the individual from Wyoming or Arizona or wherever, they've been following them and given a false sense of confidence, of knowledge. And then they find themselves in these situations and they're called on the carpet to give closure in their grammar and they can't do it they don't have the closure. All they can say is, well, so-and-so said so. Well, no one is going to take an appeal to authority as an authority. Knowledge is authority. And if you don't know why an adverb is an adverb, a verb is a verb, if you don't know what an adjective is, if you don't know what a pronoun is, if you don't know why adverbs and adjectives are modifiers and how they modify, if you don't know what a positional is, if you don't know what a lodial is, if you don't have closure on what a fact is, you'll get eaten up at the very least this grammar won't work for you the way you think it will and you'll think it's a bunch of malarkey at worst there could be damages you could go to prison it just depends on the situation that you're involved in and that's what uh, these individuals from the thumb clubs and also from the whatever the ones that by the plenipotentiary judge whatever ships for a price they find themselves in these situations I had a a young fellow who attended one of these plenipotentiary judge programs a couple years ago and uh, supposedly came out of it with the title of plenipotentiary judge 
that very night that he landed back in the United States, he contacted me because he had been pulled over by a police officer and he didn't know what to do. Now, does that sound like someone who had a legit judgeship under his belt? Someone who had closure on grammar? No, it doesn't. And that's the problem with these things. So again, for a third time to reiterate, it's always good to have these safety precautions, these um, concepts of ages under your belt to protect your vessel and to protect your loved ones. And one very potent, uh, very powerful uh, ages technology is the correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar. If you're interested in learning it, go ahead and check out my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. Just jump into any video there and start watching. And, you know, you'll see video links in the corners of my videos and you can go to the playlists and it's all there. Over almost close to 200 videos, I think, are available right now on there. And also you have this podcast you can listen to that you're listening to right now, whatever uh, venue that's from. And then, of course, if you'd like to actually speak with me in a video consultation, 10 to 15 minutes, all it costs is your now space. You can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. You can ask me a grammar question or you can apply for my correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar confidential workshops uh, thanks for listening and i'll catch you next time